Hey guys, this is uh, Bim Depot here showing you how to use the line style system within Revit. So the line styles, they're all really controlled within the manage tab, additional settings, and then line styles. So line styles themselves, they're actually made up of a few different components. So I'm gonna expand these up here. If we do this drop down, so you'll see category lines. So all of your line styles are, are really built into this drop down here. And then the couple options that you have to fill out is the line weight, and then that's gonna be a projection line weight, line color, and then line pattern. A lot of these, these are all built in some of them are really specifically for certain tasks. So for example, room separation. So that's if you have a large open area that you want to split into smaller rooms, that's going to be the line weight that's created to separate that room. So you can draw these little separation lines that will then divide the rooms up. There's a few different lines like that. So that have that special thing. Another one that I always like to find out is the beyond line weight. So that actually is for your view setup. So close out of here. If we go to the view range in the left-hand panel here, you'll notice that there are a few different things here uh, that you can play with. So bottom and view depth level. So if we were to set this below, so you can see that we have our cut plane and then the bottom of that cut plane is just at zero of our level, but you can actually tell the view to look further. So in this case, we're gonna look one foot further past the bottom of that. But let's say if you wanted to go to like the next floor, you could also do level below and then just set this to zero. So essentially what the beyond line weight is, is that anything between the bottom clip plane and the view depth clip plane, that's gonna show up as the beyond line weight. So the way that you can start to look at this is within this diagram here, our bottom is number three here. So that's the, the bottom clip plane. And then your view depth level, that is actually number six here. So that's everything within here. So if we're looking at anything in this region, it's gonna show up as that beyond. So kind of getting into some of the annotation stuff. So if we look at or start to use a detail line, you only have certain lines available for selection here. So I believe there's 11 lines here, and then they're actually all drawn to the right here. So we have beyond, center line, demolished, hidden lines, hidden lines, medium lines, overhead, path of travel lines, thin lines, and wide lines. Uh, so one thing you'll notice with all of preset Revit lines, so these are all just automatically loaded within every project. It's, you always see like the carrot brackets, so kind of at the front and back. So right now I don't, this is just a, a blank Revit template, kind of just the, the very basics uh, that are in here. If you look at this, uh, you can see just the handful that are here. I typically like to add additional ones. So these are, are a little too, there, there's really not enough options here and it's not a great way to like kind of set your your company standard so i always like to have my own company standard so the way that you create new line styles you click in manage additional settings line styles and then we will go ahead and do under modify subcategories at the bottom right we click new so typically i like to just do start with the line weight um, that, I, that i'm going to be using and then i always like to do in this case, BIM Depot BD, you could do your own firm's acronyms or, or whatever you like, um, or you could just leave it off. The reason I like to add the acronym behind it is so you know when, when a lot of people start bringing in other drawings and stuff, you kind of know what the standards are, and then you can start to switch those all to your, your firm standard, and you don't have a, a giant mess of different line weights that you know you don't really know what, what drawings you're using. So. so once you have that, you would set your line weight. So number one here line color, and then line pattern. So this all looks good, solid, number one, black. But let's say if we wanted to create a another dash line. So within this, uh, once you hit new, let's say we wanted to make a hidden line. So we would do one underscore hidden. And then again, if you choose to do this with your acronym at the end. So now here, the way that we would start to modify this is we have the hidden modifier under line pattern, switch this to hidden. And now we have two different styles of lines here. Once we have that set up, create a new detail line. You just go to the annotate tab, detail line, draw that out. And then let's make a copy of this for our second line here. So the first one, we'll click on that and then automatically modify tab comes up. And then line styles here is where you change that. You can also change it in the line styles property tab at the side here. So within here, we can now see that one underscore BD shows up as one of the line styles. And then you can see that it's changing to the one 
uh, line weight. And then if we click on the second one here, one hidden DD. So you can see that's how you can start to create larger category of your line weights. So a few other things that you can do with that. So let's say if we wanted to add for our hidden line style, we wanted to make this a little less uh, present on the page. So we switch it to a gray. So you can do that and you can see that that gray uh, actually changed there. And the other thing, so let's say if you don't like the spacing of this hidden dash. So right now we're just setting the line pattern in the hidden, but what if you want to change the actual characteristics of that pattern? So we would go back to the manage tab, additional settings, line patterns. And then you'll see within here, again, these are all the defaults, default line patterns in here. So if we navigate down to hidden, you can click edit. And then let's say if we want an equal spacing to dash here, you can really set this to whatever you want. And you can see how that then changes this. Just be aware that actually changes not only this, but if there are other lines using that hidden line pattern, which I believe this one is, you can see it kind of changed to that same, that same spacing. So one thing that you might choose to do instead of doing that, just undo that, you may choose to create a new style. And then let's just type in hidden underscore BD. Again, the suffix is just to make sure uh, you know that this is something that you've actually created. So dash, let's do, let's do one quarter. And then, so essentially what this type is, you're, you're telling it what it is. So right here, there's either dash or dot option. So we'll do dash. And then the next option you get is space. Let's do and then if you uh, you can see how like if you wanted to create like a center line or a dash dash dot or, or you know what other whatever combination of patterns you wanted to make you can actually do that and you know there's there's almost an infinite combination of things you can do here as long as it fits within 20 uh, things so go ahead and click OK and then now if we wanted to apply that to our to our personal line style, come back in here. And then now you can see hidden underscore BT is here and then you can click okay. The last option here that we haven't discussed is the, the actual line weight. So you can see this is just like a, a very generic thing that's being shown here. So it's just the number one. And you can tell that there are 16 different options here. So the location where you can actually modify that if you don't like the look of you know how those thicknesses are for each line weight. Um, again, you go to manage, additional settings, line weights, and you'll see within here, the numbers one through 16 are located along the left-hand side. And then you can actually change it per scale of your drawing. So again, this is just a default template. So these are the defaults. If you wanted to add an additional one, uh, you would just go to the left here, click add, and then choose the scale that you wanted to add. So let's say if you want a three quarter, click okay. And then you have that extra scale. So these can be, quite tricky to get right. And a lot of it is just personal preference. So the, the standards are okay, in my opinion. And uh, so it definitely takes some fine tuning for your own personal style. The amount of line weights that you actually want to use, 16 line weights is a lot. I personally use, try to use like, I think it's like five or six. So just minimizing the amount of line weights just makes things easier to choose when you're drafting. And especially it makes it more consistent across your team, across your studio, the line weights that people are using, the less options they have, the more chances that they are going to uh, get a more consistent look across all your drawings. So I've set up another file here that kind of shows just, again, the default. So this is just pulled straight out of Revit space template. You can see one to 16, the different line weights. And then on the bottom here, I have the different size scales. So you can see that number 16, uh, it's the most obvious. It kind of ranges, you know, as you get smaller, the, the line weight itself gets smaller. As you can see, there's quite a few different line weights with 16. It's, it's really excessive, especially if you have a large team trying to explain when to use each one. And really, once you get down to the bottom here, number 16 is actually quite thick. Not sure when you would actually want to use some a line that thick. So I like to keep it kind of within the first five or six. Number one being annotations, two being like the furthest thing in the elevation, three closer thing in elevation, four being your cut line, five would be your thicker cut line and anything that you really want to emphasize. Six can be your ground plane or anything that really needs to stand out within the drawing between one and six is normally uh, what I would recommend for a team. 
Line weights can take quite some time to figure out the exact thickness that you want. It's a lot of back and forth between the different scale drawings, different personal tastes, and just, you know, all in all different drawings that appear within a drawing set. It definitely takes a long time to figure that out. I do have this included within the BIM Depot template. We have everything set up. This is the template sheet that has a lot of the standards within it. In the corner here, we have line styles set up and then there's an explainer of how each of them are set up in the top here. And then we chose to do five different line weights to keep it concise. So again, you can use that as you will, but here's really kind of a, a nice comprehensive set. So we have different line patterns. So center, dash, solid, then red as well and that's really throughout all of the different line weights and then you know these kind of vary throughout we also have in here included fire rated lines so one two three and four hour rated so those are set up ready for your life safety drawings and then a lot of these lines that come standard with revit template that cannot be deleted we have those in in this pink color and that's really uh, i tend to use them as like sketch lines so if i'm trying to sketch something out within a drawing that's not necessarily for print. That's what I find myself using these a lot. But again, you can kind of customize these as you want to just using the steps that we already talked about. Last thing I want to hit here is just a little bit of a, a nice workflow thing. So if you are setting up your own line styles and trying to figure out your, your naming convention. The reason that we have the number line weight up here first, instead of you know our acronym or, or the line pattern or anything like that, is because when you go to actually draw a line, the detail line, and say where it defaults to the last line you use. So say if it was down here somewhere, if you just hit the number line weight that you're looking for on your keyboard. So let's say we're going for a line weight number three, you click three on the keyboard and then it automatically jumps to three in so it can be a really nice way to like quickly jump through the different line weights. And then even if you're looking for, say, a two dash, you still click two. And then it really gives you all the options here. All right. And that concludes the, the line styles tutorial. Like I said, all of these standards are already set up within our BIM Depot Revit template. So if you're looking to kind of cut through a lot of this, we've worked through not only the line styles, but uh, the myriad of different settings that you had to set up in the beginning of your Revit usage, Revit projects, things like that. Feel free to give that a look and yeah, see you on the next one.